Diagnostic options. If you've got one of these links uh, back home and you want to have fun with somebody, go ahead and turn this loop back on to either one of these modes. They will love you for doing it. As we talked about before, for T1 termination, you could uh, turn on one of these loopbacks and it will loop the signal back inside the IDU or the OMU, uh, which is great for testing T1s. Not so fun for Ethernet. Kind of fun if you're not there and somebody else has to fix it, I guess. So if you get the fire and log in and enable a bunch of loopbacks. I didn't say that. Pay the bill. Yeah. I'll show you a better way to do that in a minute. But if you needed to really do it, if you want to cause trouble, I'll just turn it off. No, I uh, Your syslog level. Uh, we give you a whole slew of options here. The only one that matters is set an event. Okay. If you have set an event in stat, please log into your radios and change it to set an event. If you have the status logging turned on every 30 seconds instead of log what the link is doing, yes, the RSSI is here. Yes, I have a lock. This is the MFC. This is my temperature. I'm putting in 98 megabits and I'm getting out 96 megabits or whatever every 30 seconds. Nothing useful will be in your log other than the status every 30 seconds. If you have the status logging on, you'll only get 12 hours of history. So, if something happened 13 hours ago and you wanted to see what happened, guess what? You're too late. So what is the default global direct recommendation again? Um, the default used to be set an event in stat. I fought really hard. It should be set an event now. I think we're scat. I think we're. When I look at mine, it's just a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And, uh, I should. I could go back. That'd make a global change, right? Yeah. I. I think. I think what's shipping today is set an event, but it's been a while since I've checked. We were just on the radio yesterday. So yeah, you check it too. And I'm gonna assume set means any setting changes. Any yeah. So anything that you told it to do an S, uh, SNMP trap for would be logged in as an event. Uh, anything like a link up, link down would be logged as an event. Uh, modulation changes would be logged as an event, although it would be called a link up, but they're an event. Uh, sets would be any setting. We'll go into syslog in a minute, you'll see them. Uh, any setting that was made. Okay. So if I change the Ethernet port to on to off or the egress, that's all going to show up as a setting. Uh, you could, for whatever crazy reason, just get sets and not get events. You could just get events. Or if you're really ridiculous, you could just get stats. But please just set this one. That's all you need. Unless you just installed the link and you want to know what the status is, you don't have SNMP monitoring, you want to be able to log back in the next day and look at the status. Okay, there's valid reasons to use it, okay? I'm not trying to tell you you can't use it. But you have it turned on, you only get 12 hours of history. You have it turned off, you probably have 12 years of history. <laughs> because the syslog holds 3,000 entries. 3,000 entries is a lot of settings, and it's a lot of events. But it's only 12 hours of stats. Okay. You asked about the reboot or the restart in. Here's where you do it. You want to reboot it in 15 minutes? Go here, reboot, 15, boom. Make a little warning at the top, the system's going to reboot in less than 15 minutes. So you go ahead, you make whatever change you needed to make, do something stupid like off on off, and 15 minutes later, it goes back to the same state. Now, you're smart, you didn't do anything stupid like off mode off, right here, you hear me go cancel. You saw the little warning on the way. Uh, diagnostic export will let you export a diagnostic file for technical support. Uh, we very rarely ask for these, but it's there. Uh, config reset will reset your configuration. Here's that contrary to what I said before. It gets rid of the startup config, so you have to reboot if you actually want it to go away. 
Um, but you know, if you're like getting rid of a radio, you'd hit reset and you'd unplug it, it would be reset. That takes it back to like 192, 160, 100, 100, whatever. That's a very good point. Um, config reset resets all the RF stuff. Okay, it will not reset your password, your IP address, or your SNMP strings, or the CLI prompt. Oh, okay. um, so you could actually reset a radio out in the field. It will keep its IP address for you. Yeah, very good question. Thank you. Config export will export a text file called export config .text, uh, that has all the settings in it. Uh, Here's the downside. I know, I know, I know what you're going to say. So don't tell me. We're working on it. I promise. You have to get the file out of the radio manual. Okay. Next version. Maybe you'll be able to download it from web reference. So we'll put it all together, copy the command, the line command of it? Huh? When, you, when you export it, you got to go in and then copy all the... You then have to TFTP the file in or out of the radio or FTP the file in or out of the radio. They tell me they're working on a way to... They being the engineering team. Config import would let you import a file. The file name must be export config.txt when you import it. Okay, so you could export the files, you could copy them off to something else, you could rename them, whatever the heck you want to rename them, change whatever you want to change in the file. But when you put it back in the radio, it's got to be called export config.txt. Okay? Then you import it. When you import the config, it puts it in the startup config. Okay, I'm talking Cisco language here. Hopefully that's clear to everybody. Uh, puts it in startup. If you were to reboot the radio, then that would take effect. Or if you don't want to reboot, you can config execute. Okay. Here's your pop quiz. What was the thing that I told you was the only thing you had to save and reboot for? And now I've contradicted myself four times. Bandwidth? No. Gateway. So oh, the smart. Smart mode. Smart mode. Smart mode. Okay. So there's some other things here that you could do reboots with, but they're not really required. Okay. Password. Self-explanatory. Old password. New password. New password. Um, passwords can contain lower and uppercase numbers and these symbols. Please do not use a space. Please do not use symbols other than what you see here. You might get strange behavior. It'll probably work fine, but you probably will not be able to change the password later without calling it. Okay? So use those symbols. Others where we change that web refresh rate and the system remark, which I told you I was going to change immediately and I never did, so here we go. So we're at the double tree. Double tree, I can't spell. Uh, to, I don't know where you want to go, Black Mountain? Can we see Black Mountain from here? Probably not. Okay. So my remark changes here instantly, and when I change pages, it changes up here on my tab. Okay. I, on this radio, I would do the same thing, except I would call it, don't see that one, black to, oh, here you go, here's one of my radios. One of my radios is black to stow, and that's the frequency it's on, in case you care. Okay. So you set that remark how you want to. When you change pages, it'll update it. Okay. Save the config, if you want to save the config, Reboot if you want to reboot. Again, I would suggest before you leave the site, especially when you first install it, save the config. And to make sure that you save the config, reboot it. Uh, you're welcome to pull the power if you'd rather, instead of hitting the reboot button. Whatever you want to do to make sure that you saved everything, it's going to save you, you know, I don't know, somewhere between a half an hour or like half a, you know, half a day or half a week, depending on how far away the site is. That is the web interface. Um, any